Welcome to Travel Worth Living, the travel podcast helping to share stories that matter from around the world. My name is Seth, and I'll be your host today as we get to talk with a girl named Kiana, who is originally from the U.S. and has moved here to Iceland. I was really excited to talk to Kiana because she has such a crazy story. She lived in Boston, was working there in Boston, and had visited Iceland and just became obsessed with with the land of fire and ice, just with the beauty, the scenery, the culture. And she decided to upend her life and move to Iceland. Crazy experience. Uh, during our discussion conversation, she talks about how difficult that was, some of the challenges she's faced, um, what kept pushing her to continue uh, to live here in Iceland, and how she's been able to do that. Just a lot of uh, crazy stuff. And man, she just inspires me to... You know, it doesn't matter what your dream is, what your passion is, what your what your vision for the future is. Don't let fear stop you. Just get out there and do it, and you're going to create an amazing life for yourself. So, hey, uh, definitely check out, if, if you want to just hear the audio version of this episode, check it out in the link below. If you uh, want to subscribe to our newsletter, um, be sure and sign up for that. You can get uh, notified weekly whenever a new episode premieres, or you can just get updates on what's happening at Travel Worth Living. Uh, I'll have the link to that in the sub- uh, subscription in the description as well. So hopefully you can connect with us on social media at Travel Worth Living or on the web at TravelWorthLiving.com. And I'll see you after this episode. All right, here's my conversation with Kiana. Kiana, welcome to Travel Worth Living. So excited to have you on the podcast and excited for you to share some of your stories. Yeah, thanks for having me. I've actually listened to a couple episodes before, so this is kind of exciting that now I'm a guest. Yeah, that's awesome. Let's go ahead and start by uh, telling us who you are and where you're from. Uh, so I'm Kiana and, oh my gosh, sorry, I just started hailing so hard on the window. Um, Iceland for you. Yeah, we're dealing with weather outside. <laughs> like this morning it was so windy i was like is that an earthquake or is that the wind <laughs> literally yeah speaking of which we've been having what we're up well over five thousand earthquakes since from wednesday to saturday it was crazy yeah it's been super cool actually <laughs> <laughs> um yeah but so i'm kiana and i'm from the u.s uh from so many places not just one i moved around a lot as a kid growing up but I most recently lived in Boston before I moved to Iceland. And yeah, I'm just living in Iceland now doing photography and like being like a professional tourist, you could say. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So what were you doing in uh, Boston before you moved? What was your what was your degree back education and what were you doing before you upended your life and moved across the country? <laughs> No, not across the country. Wow, no, across the world. ocean. <laughs> yeah. I uh, have moved across the country, though. I was born in California. Oh, um, nice. Yeah. Uh, so I, before I came to Iceland, I worked in college athletics in Boston, Massachusetts. And uh, yeah, so I have a master's degree and a bachelor's degree in higher education. And I studied like sports management and business in undergrad. Uh, and I just like love sports and I took a vacation one time to come to Iceland because it was all the rage it's all over Instagram I'm seeing all my friends go to Iceland I have to go to Iceland came to Iceland for like 10 days I did a road trip around the whole country and I just totally fell in love with it like I don't know how to describe this like pull that Iceland had for me but it was just magic (laughs) that's not a good way to describe it but I just loved it so much and I went back to my job and I just couldn't stop thinking about Iceland. Like, I think all my coworkers hated me because I would only talk about Iceland all the time. And they're like, okay, Kiana, we get it. Like, Iceland, all right, like, stop. Like, you're here now. And yeah, this fire just was, like, burning inside of me. And then one day I just quit my job on a whim. Um, there was, like, a little bit of drama at work, but I was just needed something new and uh had seen all these people like traveling around the world and I was like how can I like do this I'm gonna do this I'm gonna go figure it out and when I quit my boss was like uh what like do you have another job lined up like what are you doing like it was just so out of the blue and I was like um yeah I'm gonna move to Iceland and she was like what I was like yeah uh 
I guess I have to do that now. Like I just said that out loud. I had no plan like set in place before I like quit. I just did it on a whim and decided we'll just figure it out on the go. So then I sold everything I owned, uh, like didn't renew the lease on my apartment and I just came to Iceland. I love that. So when you were, when you were traveling around Iceland, was like, was there like a moment that kind of drew you into Iceland or was it just the whole experience that had you on fire when you went back to Boston? I mean, I don't think there's like any one moment, but I just, I didn't know what to expect coming to Iceland. I honestly thought that it was kind of like Lord of the Rings. Like, you know, when they're just walking through like hills and stuff and there's really nothing around. That's what I thought the trip was going to be like. I literally thought it was like that there would be nothing and we'd be like foraging for food or something and like having to pack all this. It, I don't even know why I thought that. But um, I think just driving on the South Coast, like for the first time and seeing these just like gigantic cliffs and like the mountains and the fjords, like was mind blowing to me. Everything was so dramatic and tall and just crazy. And uh, then when I saw a glacier for the first time, I was just like, Oh, so awestruck. I you learned about glaciers in like, you know, high school earth science and it's like a lot of ice. Okay, whatever. And then you see a glacier for the first time and you just like, oh my god, that's a lot of ice. Like they don't really prepare you for that in school. They need to like take you on a field trip to glaciers, I think. Like every high school student should do that in the US, but not that it's feasible, but um yeah, I was just so in love with the glaciers and it was just so crazy to me. It was like when you're driving uh, like in the Vatna local area, it's just like glacier, mountain, glacier, mountain, and just like ocean and like sheep and like these tiny birds in the cliffs. And you're just like, oh, wow, that's insane. Like, where am I? And you just don't even believe that you're like on earth anymore. It's just this crazy feeling. And yeah, that just kind of stuck with me, just pulled me in. <laughs> Yeah. Have you been able to fly over a glacier? No, I actually can't believe that I haven't even flown over Iceland. <laughs> that'll be uh, another. I don't know how yet. Yeah, that'll be another one of those experiences that are, that are just like, wow. Um, yeah, to be honest, I haven't either, but I've seen so many videos <laughs> and dreamed of it. So I'm really excited to do that just because you can see the total expanse. Because like you were saying, in the Vatna uh, area, you have glaciers and, and then mountains and then glaciers because it's like the fingers that are coming down. Like you're just seeing yeah. the tips. And so just to see the massive expanse is, is crazy. It is mind blowing how big they are. Like you can't comprehend. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So what did you do? How long were you here on that first trip? And that was your first time in Iceland, right? Yeah, it was just like a 10 day trip. We rented a camper van, a uh, friend and I, and we drove around the entire ring road and did the West Fjords as well. Uh, yeah, we did everything really. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And so, yeah, you went back and so you had only been here once before you told your boss, I'm moving to Iceland. And once you said it, you kind of had to do it. <laughs> Okay, I forgot about this. This is a little secret. I had been here twice. Okay, so I came that first time and I met somebody. I met an Icelandic person. He was like my guide. <laughs> nice. Um there's like juicy stuff, yeah. And we like just really hit it off. We ended up like just dating kind of like long distance. I don't even know how that happened, but um I came back to Iceland once and like visited him. And I was here for like a week or something. And but we didn't do any like uh traveling or anything. Like it, it wasn't like that first trip where I like fell in love because of like the travel around Iceland. Uh which is kind of like in the city and we're just hanging out. So okay, I had been twice. But when I moved, we went on together and he didn't know that I was coming. So I didn't move for him. I was like definitely had moved for me. He didn't That's even great. know that I was here when I came. <laughs> <laughs> so you had like a, an Icelandic nature experience and then more of like the culture experience in the city the second <laughs> trip. <laughs> yeah, pretty, so that's the full experience. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so then you were planning on making this move and had had you ever done anything this crazy? You grew up moving a lot, so is this kind of normal for you or is this pretty terrifying for you as well? I mean, <laughs> no, I had never done something like this. 
I guess all of my moves growing up were like, <clears throat> you know, uh, with my family. So they were pretty structured, <laughs> nothing like on the whim, you know, moving truck and everything. And this was just, you know, what do you need in Iceland? Get rid of everything else <laughs> type thing. Because uh, like, I just wanted to get all the money that I could to come to Iceland. So I sold literally everything. And um, yeah, no, this is probably one of the craziest things that I, I have done. I've done other things. Like I've biked across the US. That's pretty crazy too. But again, not on a whim, like I trained for that. And I like, was very much prepared. This I was so not prepared for. I just thought like, I don't know. I was just kind of sick of that nine to five grind. And I was afraid that I would not do something that I love to do and that I would miss something. And these are like the best years of your life, right? Your 20s. And you're supposed to go and not miss out on the world. So I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to go miss out on the world. I'm going to go and like chase what I like and be happy. And I'm not happy at this office. So let's let's just go do it and not think about it. And don't be afraid. Just be brave. I just always would tell myself that. Just be brave and go do it. Just be brave. <laughs> I love that. I think fear can be a great motivator for us to get out and experience experience life. It's it's mainly the fear of regret, uh, to be honest, because if you'd never done this, then you would have grown up to be, you know, in your 60s or 70s and looked back and been like, you know, I just retired from this job. Did I really enjoy my life? You know, and of course, there's so many uncertainties moving to Iceland, but man, the experiences you've had are incredible. What what did your family and friends think about it? <laughs> yeah, they, I mean, my family thought that I was insane. And a lot of my friends also thought that it was pretty crazy, but I'm telling you, I could not shut up about Iceland for like eight months after I came back. And um, people were like, yeah, that makes sense that you're going to Iceland. Like, <laughs> you're going to do that. I, I usually make decisions like based on my heart. I feel like I'll always do something just because it makes me happy or something. And nothing this extreme, but like my friends, they're like, yeah, that makes sense for you. Of course, you're going to go do that. Like, because that just makes you happy. So you're going to do it. <laughs> it's the, uh, but yeah. And I feel like, my family, they were like, they loved me and they were supportive, but they were just like, why are you doing this? Like, I think maybe my brothers felt some type of abandonment or something like I'm leaving them because it was such a close family. We all live, you know, kind of relatively close in the same couple hours of each other. Um, and they don't know anything about Iceland. They've never been to Iceland. And they probably thought what I thought the first time, that it's just like nothing here, that I'm moving to some like country where I'm going to live in like a turf house or something and there's no internet and just I don't know but um yeah I think once they saw like my life here they like got it and they seen how happy that I am and my mom is coming to visit next month so that's super nice. exciting and I can't wait to show her like you know all the things that make me happy and hopefully she'll understand more why I want to be here yeah absolutely that's awesome Sometimes it can be so hard, you know, navigating that relationship with friends and family because they care about us, but they don't always see everything from our perspective. So, yeah, just having that healthy relationship where you can talk things through and they're like, OK, we trust you. And then now they see that you've made a great decision. That's awesome. So, yeah, you moved here to Iceland. Uh, what were those first days like? <laughs> <laughs> okay I came to Iceland with like three bags or something like a massive suitcase a duffel and like a backpack and I didn't even have a plan like once I got off the plane I didn't even have a ride I didn't know how I was gonna get <laughs> uh, anywhere and um, I did have a family to stay with so when I first came to Iceland I had set up a work away which is just like kind of a barter for food and accommodation um, have you ever heard of this? Nope, like, but it, so. I love the concept. Yeah, <laughs> it's like kind of um, it's like for travelers. It's like kind of a like cheap way to travel, like Woof. Maybe some people have heard of. So <laughs> it kind of works like the website, kind of like Airbnb. You just go on, type in like a city or a country, and then a whole list of things will come up. Like, oh, this family needs help on their farm, or this family needs help with their business, or they're building a house, or I don't know, or they need like an au pair type of person. There's so many things that um 
are posted. So I picked one of those to like help keep my costs down in the beginning, since I knew I wouldn't have a job right away. Um, and I had to get to this family's house. And you know, the Catholic airport is like four to five minutes to an hour away from the city. So you're, I didn't know how I was going to get there with all my stuff. I had befriended a person on my flight who was also American <laughs> going to Iceland for um, sadly a funeral. But like, we ended up talking and then I saw him again in the airport and at like five o'clock in the morning because every flight from the US is an overnight flight and it lands and you're just like so groggy, you didn't sleep on the plane and it's like two o'clock in the morning, your time and you just want to die. But I like talked to him at the like baggage claim and I was like, so um, how are you getting? <laughs> so I wanted to ask him for a ride, but I didn't want it. I didn't want to ask him for a ride. Like I wanted him to offer a ride. Okay. I wanted it to be his idea. So I like planted this seed, like, yeah, trying to figure out how to get out of, out of the airport and into the sea. I'm not sure, not sure what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> and he was like, I'm sure we could give you a ride. I was like, no, you don't have to do that. <laughs> but it's like, you know, everyone nice and just so nice. And so I met, I met this guy and uh, yeah. And then I met his like brother-in-law who was the one that picked him up or something. And, we drove like all around Iceland really because I was going to get dropped off at like a cafe near this house that I was going to, but it was so early that it was closed. And they were like, we can't drop you off. Like it's closed. Like, what are we going to, we can't do that. You just, you'll just stay with us. So they're like planning this funeral, doing all these errands. And I'm just with them also like doing these funeral errands. And it was, I was like, what is my life? Like I just moved to Iceland. What am I doing? And <laughs> Me and the guy, the other American, we were so tired, right, from this flight. So then this guy who picked us up brought us to his house, which is outside of the city. It's, like, on the south coast, like, an hour away. And we just, like, took a nap. He, like, had extra bedrooms, and we just both took a couple-hour nap to, like, refresh. And then he drove me, like, to this family's house, like, later that afternoon. It was so crazy i was like i can't tell my parents i'm doing this like <laughs> riding around with strangers who i don't even know like going to their house taking a nap like my mom's not gonna like this but i mean it all works out in iceland i feel and there's no like sketchy people i think everybody here is so nice in iceland like and can be trusted in that way it just everything always works out <laughs> that's hilarious sounds like you're <laughs> you're a pretty good master negotiator there i love it it's like plant the seed cultivate it and have them offer and then you take up <laughs> oh sure i'm glad you thought of that that's awesome <laughs> well it makes me sound so manipulative i'm so not like that but i did not know what to do i was like i have no idea where i'm supposed to go and it was so early i was like i don't even know where i could take a bus to right now i would just like be stranded yeah, yeah but it worked out <laughs> That is, that is hilarious. And yeah, no, I, I feel like in when traveling, one of the most important things you can cultivate is that like picking up on people's vibes, knowing who to trust and who not to trust. And if you can pick up on that pretty quick, then you can do last minute things like riding around with strangers for a few hours and taking a nap. Uh, yeah, in a completely new city. So yeah, that's awesome. So what were you doing um, with the with the work work away? Is that what it's called? Yeah, yeah the work away family. Um, so yeah, this family was just like a mom and two kids and like seven and eleven or something like that. And um she was a nurse, so she worked crazy hours and basically her she would like go to work before her kids went to school. So she just kind of needed help around the house, like get the kids up and send them to school. Um, and then I would just do some like housework as well, like clean the house, do laundry or something. And it was pretty chill. Like I, I think I had so much freedom, uh, living with the family and we got super close. I still like have dinner with them, um, every month or something and love the kids. Uh, and I just like stayed in the house. They had an extra bedroom and I lived there for a couple months. Uh, yeah, it was really nice. I've heard of like really bad ones though like that people they went to a family's house and they had like eight kids and they had like no life and they were like the nanny really but I was like not like that at all and sometimes she had to work the night shift or something and the little boy was like oh I have homework and I'm like what he was like you have to help me my homework and he would take out this like paper it's all in my sonic and I'm like uh I uh okay I don't know how I can help you but we'll figure it out like why did you tell me at 9 p.m to do homework due tomorrow oh my goodness 
but yeah, it was, uh, it was really nice. <laughs> so would, would the kid like translate it for you and kind of help you through it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, he was like eight, so, uh, or seven or something. So he spoke great English, but when it came to like reading something and then telling me what it was saying in English, he had like trouble doing that, like the translating type thing. Um, but I mean, we got through it somehow. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I feel like this is a great point to start talking about Icelandic. So when when did you start learning Icelandic? Did you after your first trip? Did you go home and and well, especially when you when you met the guide, were you trying to learn right off the bat? No, uh, no, I was not at all. Like, no, <laughs> I had pretty basic words um, like thank you and yes and no. Like that's was maybe the extent of everything that I knew. And then when I came for the workaway, I like downloaded an app called Drops and I practiced Icelandic that way. Like it was nice, but I mostly just knew food words, like <laughs> it, like sitting at the table <laughs> and stuff. Um, and that's like kind of when I lived with the family, we, they spoke Icelandic uh, and we hung out the most when we were eating. So those like words all stuck with me. So I have a lot of like food related words, like really down. Um, and then I didn't do like anything beyond that. Uh, then I applied for the university to study Icelandic, not because I necessarily wanted to, uh, but out of necessity of staying into the country, you know, I could have a student visa and the university was free. Um, but now it's all on Zoom and I, I hate to admit that it's not going well. I mean, I don't put in that much effort to it, but it is really, it's a hard language to learn. It's so hard, uh, especially learning like grammar rules and stuff. I feel like I just kind of learn more when I hang out with my Icelandic friends and I listen to them talk and ask them questions and stuff. Um, and I have a friend who has a kid who's like two and a half or something. And I feel like I just like to hang out with him because we can communicate and just say simple words to each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. That that's tough. So what what degree are you studying or is it just like a course or Yeah, I don't think um it's a degree. I think it's like a certificate maybe. Like and it's only it's a one year program. Uh so I think yeah, maybe you just come out with a certificate or something and yeah, I'm not like looking to and get education. Yeah, it fulfills the student visa requirements, so you're good. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. It was, I think it's the only, um, I mean, I could be wrong on this, but it's the only English taught, like, program. So I had no choice. I had to do that one. Yeah, so. got you. So <laughs> if you don't mind me asking, what are you studying right now? <laughs> like, what are some things that you're you're learning in the language? Oh, my gosh. Or just, okay. or just the last thing you can remember. <laughs> um. Well, I had... Um, okay, I had like a big test earlier this week and I think it was mostly um, talk like past tense verbs mm. because the verbs are just like <laughs> they just change so much this language is so complicated um, so I think that that test was mostly about like past tense things and then we also had to do like uh, an interview with an Icelandic person talking about hobbies so that was just like a recording and so I just spoke with a friend about hobbies and I think that was more like just p talking practice or something like that gotcha. um and we're supposed to write an essay so I'm gonna go uh hope no teachers are listening to this but I'm gonna go to my friends after this so he can help me write this essay on like a children's book we had to read <laughs> oh, man so, I'm not the best student yeah so are you able to like have basic conversations in Icelandic or or how how is your Icelandic because you've been I here mean, for what, a year now? Yeah, that's, a year and a half. That's not a lot of time. <laughs> not no, with this language. <laughs> no. But I'll order something in Icelandic um, uh -huh. at a restaurant or something. But then that's like all I can do. Like then they'll, the, the person will say something back to me and I'm like, oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, tell <laughs> Yeah. Uh, that's all I had. Sorry. And I think that they're like at least appreciative that I tried and then... I just can't go. I'm, like, I'm sorry. I can't go any further than that. I don't know what you're saying. You know, you know what I've found? I found my favorite phrase to say is Yeralarisenska, like I'm learning Icelandic, because that switches in their mind that I'm not good at Icelandic, but I'm also trying. 
And I've noticed that it really makes people more friendly because sometimes when you just like, you're like, I have no idea what you're saying. They'll be like, uh, you know, and they'll, they'll have to repeat it in English or, or whatever. But when you say that, you know, I'm learning Icelandic, then it really makes them more, uh, more friendly to you. So yeah, but it's, it's tough, man. It's, it's so hard. <laughs> it is hard, especially because I feel like some of the words, there's like sounds that you just don't even know how to make. Like we don't make these sounds in English and you don't, like your mouth doesn't know what it's supposed to do to produce these sounds. Yeah, like the glaciers. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. You could Yeah. Uh. Um, man, that's crazy. So yeah, you're talking about you're you're doing the student visa right now because that kind of helps fulfill the requirement for staying in the country. Um, so talk a little bit about the process of moving to Iceland. For somebody who is like, hey, I want to go to a different country. First of all, the fact that this is possible, that you're doing this, is incredible to me. Because you grew up as, you know, an American. I grew up as an American. In America, we don't travel. Like, we travel for vacation, but that's it. We don't even think about, like, moving states is a big deal for us. I know people who haven't even left their, their state. Uh, it's crazy. So to do something like this, to actually get up and move out of country uh, around the world is pretty incredible. So especially for Americans listening to this, what was kind of the process that you went through? And I know it probably wasn't the most planned out, but you're doing it. So what, what, <laughs> what was kind of the process that you went through to live here in Iceland right now? Yeah, I mean, I think I had like a lot of obstacles, like both mentally and physically, um, because it is kind of scary. And so again, I would just like tell myself, just be brave and do it. And also, I think that this is kind of one of those things where you can't really see the fear. You just feel fear. So like, I feel like if I had to like jump over like something like a river or something that's like really far and I can see, Oh, I might not make it. I'm like too afraid to do it, but like, I'm not afraid to move to Iceland on a whim. Like I, if you can't see the fear, then it's just easier for me. I don't know if that's just weird or not, but um so yeah there was the mental hurdle of that and I would just be like nope just be brave just do it and then the physical part looked a lot like oh this looks impossible I would just google like you know how to move to Iceland and I'm reading all up on the Icelandic immigration website and it basically is just impossible for an American to move to Iceland not just Americans just anybody who doesn't have an EU passport right so the easiest way to move to Iceland is just having an EU passport. You can just come and like, there's no problem. Um, they'll just give you like an ID number and you can stay for as long as you want. And if you don't have that, then you have to figure out something. You need some type of visa. And the easiest way is to honestly get married to an Icelandic person. Um, like the Icelandic embassy in the US told me that. I called them and I was like, this looks so hard. Like I'm trying to move to Iceland. Am I missing something? Like I've read everything on your website, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, nope, it is that hard. Like we recommend that you get married. And I was like, yeah, okay. Like I don't even know anybody in Iceland. So how am I going to do that? Uh, <laughs> but um, other than that, so you can get married or you can have a work visa, which uh, like an employer has to sponsor you, but it's like so much paperwork, just as hard as it would be for any other um person from the world to move to the US, it's just as hard for uh, to move to Iceland and get some type of work visa. Somebody has to want to sponsor you and be able to prove that they couldn't find another worker in Iceland or in the EU to do that job. So you have to become some specialty type of worker, which their immigration has like already like decided what these special skills are. Like you can be in some medical field or like computer science type thing, which I so am not any of those things. And, or specific to Iceland, like you could be a glacier guide. So that was like kind of always in the back of my mind. Okay, glacier guide, but I don't have any of those skills, but that would kind of be a cool job. Um, other ways to move to Iceland, oh, you could be an au pair, but there's like all these criteria to be an au pair and I didn't fit them. I just missed the age mark by like a couple months. And I was like, why didn't I look into this a little bit sooner? Like it was like six months and I was like too old to, be like a true au pair I was so mad at myself or you could be there's like an athlete visa uh but I'm not a professional athlete by any means um yeah there's it's hard they don't make it easy whatsoever it's been an uphill battle or a student visa so I also had that in the back of my mind but I hate school 
Um, I'm so not meant to be like sitting in the classroom. I was like the worst student ever, always goofing off, like making jokes, being sent to the principal's office. Like my teachers would call my parents and be like, Kiana is, you know, a troubled child. She's distracting. She's sassy. She talks back to us. And they're like, you're the teacher. Figure it out. Like, don't bring this to us. We know we live with her. (laughs) Yeah, we deal with it enough. You deal with it at school. (laughs) oh my goodness so yeah school was like totally not an option for me um so yeah I came to Iceland and I was like okay well I'm just gonna hope for the best and then apply to every job here and just hope that somebody wants to hire me uh yeah that that failed like I just got probably over 100 job rejections which just crushed my soul it's just so rejection hurts it does and it's exhausting like applying to that many jobs yeah a new cover letter every time like oh my goodness anyway So after all of these rejections and, you know, I would even like go through with interviews and stuff and be like one of two candidates left. And then the only reason that I wasn't picked is truly because I was American. And they would say that to me because it was just so much more effort to hire me and they would just go with somebody else that they didn't have to do all this paperwork and stuff for. So then I was like, okay, well, my, I'm going to have to become a glacier guide. Like, that's a special skill. Let's do it. So I reached out to other glacier guides that I had known on Instagram. I mean, known. I didn't know them. I just followed them and knew that they were glacier guides. So I, like, asked them to show me the ropes. And then, uh, so I met some people that way. And then I signed up for the course to, like, learn all of the skills and, like, rescues and stuff. And that was a really fun experience as well. And then I knew that I couldn't get hired unless you have some type of medical, like, um, certification of some sorts. So then I came back to the U.S. to take one of these courses because it was just way cheaper. Um, And I had also overstayed my time in Iceland at that time. So I came back to the U.S., uh, took, um, I think it's, like first aid, like wilderness first aid or wilderness first responder or something. It was like the highest uh, like medical thing you could possibly take. And I wanted to take the highest one so that I was, people would want to hire me. There would be no reason to not hire me. I would have all like the top certifications. Um, And I had gotten like some advice from other glacier guides to do that because how could somebody reject me if I have all the certifications now they don't have to pay for me to do anything. yeah, that also didn't work out. I also got a lot of rejection after that still because I was American. Ugh, so I was just, my soul was crying. Like, I didn't want me here, just adversity. Oh, um, and I just hustled. Like, I just did so many random things. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, yeah, and then finally, finally, probably through just knowing people in the network of Iceland, I, like, landed a job as a glacier guide. Um and the, they were like excited to have me and they thought it would be no problem to hire me because they already hired a Canadian in the past. And that's kind of the same thing as an American. So Don't I was say stoked. that to other they Americans were though. We're not like Canadians. <laughs> I don't know, we're much meaner, right? Um, <laughs> Canadians are so nice. No, but um, yeah. And like the paperwork was in and like visa stuff was happening and I'm so excited and then COVID happened and every guide in Iceland, anyone working in tourism lost their job and that sucked. So yeah, I just had wanted to, through this whole process, still live in Iceland so badly that a couple of months before this, I had applied to the university just in case I didn't get a job. It was like my plan Z. Like if the whole world fails, no one wants to hire you. Like you're at the bottom of the bottom, like your lowest of low you're going to go to school. That's like my low point is, wow. Okay. We're going to school. Like, okay. Is she okay? Like she's going to school. Like that's not a good decision for her. Shouldn't do that. Um, I mean, the world fell apart. Like who knew that the world would literally fall apart, but I ended up getting in, I was accepted into this program and yeah. So I I came back as a student (laughs) and now I'm on the student visa and we've got to figure out what's going to be the next move. But hopefully I think I have some things in the works. Awesome. I think that is crazy. That is a crazy (laughs) story. And I think it's really good for people to hear that story because um, when they see your social media, like myself included, like, you know, you see 
you out adventuring, you see the amazing life you're living, the incredible nature that you get to see. And people don't realize how much work it took to get you from where you were to where you are today. And I think just hearing that story helps people realize, because so often when we're trying to chase our dreams, we get discouraged because there are so many obstacles. But you've pushed through and now you're able to, and the story is still continuing. Like you said, you know, the, the <laughs> next steps are kind of unclear, but you're still pushing um, to be living the dream here in Iceland. So that's awesome. I feel like I've never tried so hard for something in my entire life. Just, oh my gosh, trying to figure out how to live here is just absolutely crazy. And yeah, but thank you for uh, talking about my Instagram photos are nice. <laughs> Yeah, which, uh, talking about that, were you into photography before you came to Iceland? <laughs> um, kind of, but no. Uh, so I, you know, found out about Iceland through Instagram, right? That's how everybody is, like, finds out about everything. Yep. And I followed all of these people on Instagram who lived in Iceland, and they just adventured through Iceland all the time, like on crazy road trips, like doing like epic things, hot springs and, you know, mountains and stuff. And I was like, how do they do this? Like, how do they like just live this adventurous life in Iceland? And then I'm like, you know, doing my research, stalking them. And I see that they're all photographers. And I... So now in my mind, every person that lives in Iceland <laughs> in my life, like my small little Instagram, like discover page, they're all photographers. I'm like, wow, everyone in Iceland is a photographer. That's how they live in Iceland. I guess I have to become a photographer. So I bought a camera and like taught myself through YouTube how to use a camera and like what makes a good photo and stuff like this. And I always liked taking photos. I just didn't have a camera or anything. I would just, I don't know. I was like, uh phone hobbyist person um and I was like yeah I, I had to become a photographer and then I came to Iceland and realized that not everybody's a photographer <laughs> um but I really liked doing it and I had this like new passion of like creating with a camera and imagery and telling stories and stuff as well as like just this passion for Iceland and this just like unforgiving love for this country that I just want to share it with everybody um those things just kind of then went hand in hand <laughs> taking cool pictures to inspire other people to come to Iceland but yeah no, I wasn't really into photography before that's awesome. and now so you... that's what I do and now I just shoot for brands and that's how I get by that's awesome yeah so yeah and you're you already have quite a quite a significant amount of followers on Instagram too so um you're you're quite successful in that space so that's awesome um yeah so basically you didn't take any like professional training for photography you just got out there and practiced like just did it yeah that and that's kind of the way that I like to learn just like going out and do it and learning that way definitely not this classroom situation I probably would have been a bad student uh like even if I was learning photography because yeah. I just don't do well as that type of student um but yeah just when I, I mean yeah a, a year ago I had like a really shitty camera and I've upgraded and everything uh yeah, I, I can't really believe that, like, now I'm a photographer. <laughs> I never thought that that was, like, the life for me. I never knew anything about photography before. <laughs> That's crazy. So for somebody listening to this who is like, man, I have a dream of moving to Iceland or moving anywhere in the world and becoming a photographer, what are some tips that you could share looking back uh, for somebody just starting out to get to where you are now? I mean, be brave for sure. I think the like biggest obstacle people face is like the mental block, you know, that they think they can't succeed and like imposter syndrome, like you're not good enough for something or yeah, just like, yeah, the self-confidence really that you won't be able to make it or that the fear of failure or something, you just have to be brave, like get over it which is so much easier said than done. And I'm sitting here saying that, but I still like suffer every single day, not thinking that I'm good enough to like make it. Um, but I think you just have to go and you have to do it. You have to stop talking about it and you just have to try um, because nothing is ever going to get done. If you just talk about it, you just need to go do it. Do you want to be a photographer? Okay. Then, you know, pick a, pick a product or something and just make up your own photo shoot. And it sounds like so silly to say and to hear sometimes like, 
I know that this advice came to me as well. Just, oh, go do a fake photo shoot. Like it doesn't have to be for this brand, but it's for your portfolio. Um, but it, I mean, you need it. You need a portfolio. Like <laughs> people aren't going to hire you to do anything if they can't see what you've done. And no one has to know that it wasn't like a paid job or something. They just need to see that you can take great photos. So I guess my advice is to just do something. (laughs) Just try. (laughs) That is fantastic advice. And I mean, one of the best things you can do, for instance, if you want to start shooting for small businesses, like go to a local coffee shop, take photos for them, give it to them for free. Be like, hey, you can use this, you know. I'm going to use this as my portfolio. Do you have any other businesses that would need a product like this, like photography? And then you start growing it from there. I mean, it it's just getting out there, like you said, overcoming that fear, being brave and just doing it. I absolutely love that. Yeah. So yeah, what has been one of the most surprising things for you living here in Iceland? Kind of a big culture shock from moving from America, living here in Iceland. Um, okay. Where do I start now? Um, first of all, the weather is insane here. Like, <laughs> I never thought that I would be like, because the weather is crazy. Like right now, it's snowing and it's so windy. And you know, earlier on this show, there was hail, and like yesterday morning, there was an earthquake. And when I woke up today, it was super sunny and it looked like a nice day. The weather just is so crazy here, but you can't let it stop you. Because I feel like at home, well, in Boston. You wake up and it's raining and you're like, oh, it's a sh- day. But here it's raining and in five minutes it's blue skies and it's like a nice day and you just can't let it bother you here. The weather just changes so much. Uh, and sometimes, you know, the roads close and you can't drive and you just, it's it's no stress. You can't like let it get to you. You just kind of go on. Um, and that kind of mentality that they have in Iceland, like that you just, everything is so calm. Like there's no stress in the U S I feel like it's just such a rat race, like such a grind, like where so many people have to like be at places early and you know, just who can do it the best and who can do the most, who can work the most hours this week and like still have a crazy weekend. But why does it have to be so stressful? Like here, everyone is just, I don't know, so calm and relaxed. I really like this more relaxed kind of vibe that everybody has here. Yeah, I think it was it, <laughs> one of the most surprising things for me was uh, when I first came here and we'd go to Kringland on a Saturday night and it would be closed. And I'd be like, what? <laughs> like, this, why? How? <laughs> you know, in, in America, like, stores are open until 11 p.m., you know, especially on weekends because people are out doing right. shopping and stuff. But yeah, it, yeah, everybody's more laid back here. It's It's very true. Yeah, I feel like, especially stories, they're like, well, we're open when we're open, and we're closed when we're closed. And as an American, I'm like, yeah, but I need your opening hours. Like, when do you open? And they're like, well, when we're here, you'll see. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what? But, um, yeah, I guess just be just going with the flow is kind of fun. You just don't stress about other things in your life. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I, I'm really enjoying Iceland during these COVID times, because you can just go to all of the really touristy places and there's nobody there. Um, it's kind of a break from from before when everything was just swamped with people. It's kind of nice to have it have it all to myself, just being out in nature alone. Um, I feel like when tourism gets back, like I know it needs to get back and I can't wait for people to come and travel to Iceland and like have my friends and family visit and stuff and have the economy better in Iceland. But... I think I'm going to miss it. I'm going to miss this like loneliness around the country. It's yeah, kind of a nice feeling. But honestly, like we were living up in Eastfield, up in the West Fjords, and we barely got any tourists. It was like the tour ships would come in. Um, 5,000 people would get off. The town would double in size. You know, people would be all over. Then the ships would leave and it would go- be quiet again. So there's a lot more of Iceland that people can experience. So yeah, my, my thing that I like to tell people is if you come to Iceland, get out and experience more than just what's around here because it's, it's pretty crowded. So yeah. And another way they can learn about Iceland is by following you on Instagram um, and TikTok. <laughs> what, uh, yeah. What is your username? How can people find you on social media? Yeah. I'm, on both Instagram and TikTok, I'm just Kiana Sue, uh, K-Y-A-N-A-S-U-E. 
who is my middle name. Um, yeah, I mean, I just post everything I send and TikTok is more of my like unscripted <laughs> version of Iceland. I talk about some more interesting things there than just travel. I'll talk about like my dating life in Iceland and my day to day and things like that. Uh, so it can get a little more exciting. But yeah, I just try to like educate people and inspire people about Iceland so that they can come and do it the right way, as you're saying, respectfully and and go to new places that they maybe wouldn't have known about or some things yeah there is more than just the south coast but no one should miss the south coast i mean it's really beautiful there <laughs> it's popular for a reason yeah absolutely yeah um okay well going go ahead going ahead and wrapping this up now wow that was really complicated wrapping this up now <laughs> i'd like to finish with uh kind of a bigger question Looking back at where you were just like two years ago to where you are now, uh, what has been some of the biggest personal development that you've gone through as far as like facing your fears and what you've learned in this process? Wow, that's <laughs> a really great question. You couldn't give me any heads up you were going to answer that. Sorry. Um... <laughs> I just thought of it. I was like, oh, I want to ask this because I'm just so inspired by your story. Like, how many people just randomly move to another country? Like, that's crazy. I only did it because my wife is Icelandic. Like, we, I had a huge advantage. I mean, huge. And talking to people like you, I realized just how huge it is because I have family here, you know, because I married someone. Um, so what you, like, you and I are on two different levels. We did not do anything the same at all. So I'm just so inspired by people like you who just has a dream, has a passion for another country and gets, gets up and moves there. So yeah, is what was, uh, how has that affected you? Um, I mean, I think that might just be it. Like, I don't think I was this person who was like a dream chaser two years ago. I wasn't some person, yeah, that would do things like this. Like I was never this backpacker that traveled the world and, you know, I don't know, like I really was just a typical, I worked a nine to five, you know, went to the gym, went out for drinks, like hung out with my friends. And then, I don't know, I was just more inspired to live life, to like think about it and realize that there is so much out there and we're going to miss it. And you, I mean, not everybody thinks this way, like people can think logically or something, but I'm definitely an emotional, like driven person. And I didn't want to like, look back and realize that I've been so unhappy, like at a job, like for five years, like what have I been doing for five years, every single day, I'm like, sitting at a desk, looking at a computer, answering emails. That's I just I feel like I've wasted five years. Like, what am I doing? I just want to go and live. I don't really know what I want to do. But like, I didn't have this crazy, you know, passion for photography. It wasn't something like, oh, one day I'm going to quit my job and, you know, go do photography full time. Like that was so not it. I definitely don't think anyone should do what I did. Like maybe you should have more of a plan in place. Uh, but I think you should just live your life, like do something different and make sure that you're not going to look back one day and wish you had done something differently. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> no, that's that's awesome. That's powerful. I almost want to finish the finish the episode on that because that's so good. But uh, I'm going to wrap this up with the rapid fire facts section. My favorite. Oh uh, yeah, my favorite game at the end. It's okay. It's it's not stressful at all. I just have to find it here. Um, I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions, and you just say the first thing that comes to mind. Do you prefer beaches or cities? Uh, beaches. Do you prefer group or solo travel? Uh, group? Small group. Small group. Small uh, group? If you had the option to go on train or bus, which would you choose? Oh my god. Neither. But I guess train. I hate buses. <laughs> I'm so against the buses. <laughs> yeah. Um, when you're flying, do you prefer a window or an aisle seat? Oh, definitely the window. I love to like look out for sure. What is your favorite airport that you've flown through? Uh, 
I don't know. The one in Chicago, it's so big. They have the popcorn, you know. O'Hare. I love that place. <laughs> yeah. Uh, are you Nikon, Canon, Sony, or Fujifilm? Um, I shoot with a Canon, so that's all I have to say. Nice. Apple or Android? Oh, Apple. There's no reason anyone should have an Android. Sorry, that's a red flag for me. Do you have an Android? <laughs> Uh, what's your favorite city that you visited? Um, my favorite city, I think, is Rome. Um, mm. Yeah, I studied abroad in high school, and we in high school in college um, in Dublin, and we traveled Europe. And yeah, I just loved Rome so much. Awesome. And then, last question. This one can be as long as you want it to be. But what makes travel worth it to you personally? Uh what makes it worth it i mean just seeing something new and feeling something new i feel like when i travel i love to travel in iceland because it's more than just oh i saw a cool thing it really makes me feel something i just yeah i feel like rejuvenated and i just i don't know uh it's like it's pretty empowering too to go like to leave your comfort zone and see new things um but I just think, yeah, the feeling that you get makes it worth it for sure. Love it. Well, thanks, Kiana, for coming on. I have thoroughly enjoyed this. Uh, yeah, thanks for sharing your stories here on the podcast. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. This was a fun Sunday morning. Thank you so much for listening to this conversation. I hope you were as inspired by Kiana's story as I was. Uh, go go out and live that dream. Like Pursue that passion. It doesn't matter what what's going on in your life, what fears you may have, what struggles you may be facing. Just go do it. And yeah, if, if you need inspiration, go follow Kiana's page. She has lots of it over there. Uh, be sure and sign up for our newsletter so you can stay updated on Travel Worth Living news. Uh, you can find the, the link to that in the description. Uh, give me some feedback on social media. Come say hi, Travel Worth Living, or on the web at travelworthliving.com. And I will see you again next week.